in this episode we will see about the mountings and accessories of boilers mountings are the main important things which are coming with the boilers accessories which we will provide as we required number one is water level indicator pressure gauge drum pressure gauge pressure safety valve main stem stop valve blow off blow down cock fit check valve air vent valve and uh, fuse fill plug is normally used in the fire tube boiler or locomotive boilers accessories are air preheater super heater feed water pump feed water heater where heat transfer is from the exhaust steam if flue gas is used for uh, heat transfer then it is called economizer normally 1% fuel is saved if the temperature increase is uh, 1.5 degrees centigrade so if you use a feed water heater or economizer you can save the fuel then feed water regulator that is the feed control valve and a separator steam separator and also the steam traps these are also accessories used in the boilers mountings are necessary all this will come in water tube and smoke tube uh, and this oil will come only in smoke tube fat tube boilers air preheater and superheater superheater coils are there when we require superheated steam at high pressure feed water pump normally required for all the boilers either feed water heater or economizer is used if you are using the exhaust steam from the steam turbine and uh, that in that boilers we are using feed water heater the economizer is at uh, the inlet of while feed water before admitting to the boiler drum and there is feed water control valve and this separator is the steam drum and steam traps outside the header now we can see the classification of boilers boilers are classified uh, with respect to the service uh, that is stationary locomotive or marine in stationary either the steam is used for heating or in power plant locomotive and marine are the uh, classification with respect to the service according to the form of service fire tube boiler or shell tube in which flue gas passes through the tube and uh, the flue gas is surrounded by the water in water tube boiler flue gas is surrounded by the water inside the tube and uh, uh, tube is a cylindrical shell which is made in small sizes whereas flue gas flue is a large cylindrical shell there is a difference between tube and flue so the third category is according to the direction of axis of shell whether it is vertically mounted or horizontal then the fourth one is according to the location of furnace whether the boiler is furnace is internally fired or externally fired and uh, next type is special type electric boiler or one screw boiler or cast iron boiler these are the classification of boilers now we can see about the objective of boiler feed water treatment based on the operating pressure and usage of the boiler feed water is used which is demineralized water dm water or polished water ultra pure water is selected and treated before admitted in boilers for steam turbine normally polished water is used which is having very less silica less than 0.02 ppm and conductivity also very less dm water is normally used in uh, boilers where it is used in process service when water is evaporated in a boiler total dissolved solids or salts which are concentrated and insoluble salts are precipitated this may either be separated out in the form of non adhering soft sludge which can be removed by blow down that is the when you are adding chemical like tsp uh, dissolved solids and uh, insoluble salts which will not ever get evaporated it will be in the water with the water only that will be removed by blow down or they may get deposited on the sides of boiler and the tubes as othering scale 
that accumulation of scale and deposit formation on heating surface areas will reduce the rate of heat transfer. Uh, that is a risk for boiler, risk of overheating and failure of the affected surfaces. That if the scale formation is there, heat transfer will reduce and overheating or direct imaging of a flame if it is inside furnace, then that will lead to bulging of that particular area and failure will occur. Then corrosion also will occur. Corrosion of feed water is determined by the nature of salt present in feed water and based on the pH of the water and the dissolved oxygen content. Normally high purity water like DM water or polished water is more corrosive than raw water, especially in the presence of dissolved oxygen. If oxygen is present in the boiler feed water, then it is highly corrosive. So we have to remove the dissolved oxygen. Then the concentrated alkalis or nitrates present in polyfill water that will attack the steel or boiler material, con material of construction. So we have to avoid these things. So we have to use chemical dosing that you will see. That you will see. The objective of boiler feed water treatment and the treatment methods now we can see. The soil oxygen and carbon dioxide are treated in deaerator by mechanical and chemical deaeration. Mechanical deaeration is the, by removing dissolved oxygen and uncondensable gases like carbon dioxide, which are stripped off or removed from feed water by low pressure steam. Feed water is sprayed from top of the deaerator through distributor nozzles to very small droplets. It is to have effective contact with steam, which will be admitted from the bottom. The removed oxygen and carbon dioxide are vented out. The steam not only reduced oxygen to less than 0 0.007 ppm or so parts per billion and carbon dioxide to 500 parts per billion, that is 0.5 ppm in deaerator. It also preheat the incoming feed water to around 106 to 108 degrees centigrade. The pressure maintained inside the deaerator will be the partial pressure of oxygen present in feed water, which will help effectively in deaeration process. Since the deaerator pressure will be around 0.4 to 0.6 bar and uh, feed water temperature even if it is increased to 106 uh, to 108 degrees centigrade which is less than the boiling point at 1.5 bar. So deaerator is also si situated at a height of 14 to 15 meters from the ground level to avoid vapor lock in boiling feed water pump by giving sufficient NPSH. That is, when the steam is preheated to 108 degrees centigrade in atmospheric pressure, the water vapor will be formed in the boiler feed water pump suction. So, cavitation or vapor rock will occur in the boiler feed water pump suction. Since we are maintaining around 1.4 to 0.6 bar, that is 1.5 bar at the pump suction, that is gauge pressure, and also it is at a height of 14 to 15 meter, that will give a net sufficient net purchase suction net so that vapor lock is avoided in the highly feed water pump. That's why the deaerator is situated at situated at height. Then the chemical deaeration or oxygen scavenger, this chemical injection is given at the outer line of the deaerator which is going to the pump suction. After the mechanical deaeration, the deaerator outer line coming through some through a dust will go to a pump suction. In that our pump suction line just above, up immediately after the deaerator, chemical injection is normally done. That is oxygen scavenger is normally injected at the outlet end of the deaerator. This is a schematic diagram of deaerator. Deaeration process is like this. This is a deaerator storage. This is a vent line which is venting out the Shipping a stripped of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Boiler feed water is normally admitted at the top that is sprayed through the spray nozzle and that is formed as a small droplet which is coming to the bottom. And steam is admitted from the bottom that will also preheat the 
feed water which is stored in the deerator after mechanical deerration and steam is emitted at at the stage to ship off the incoming bottle feed water to trade section that uh, after the droplet through nozzle it passes through the trace to have effect a more area of contact and residential team steam is admitted from the bottom feed water is coming to the top from the top the counter current uh, service so steam will ship off the dissolved oxygen and co2 from the bottle feed water it, it will uh, goes less than 0.007 ppm of oxygen and normally we will maintain around 50 to 55 percent of level in the deerator this is the storage section at the outlet normally the two theaters will be there that will be connected to form a single line and this outlet line immediately after the storage normal oxygen scavenger is injected and this is the pump section we will maintain around 1.4 to 1.6 Uh, one like say 1.5 bar even at that particular pressure even that temperature increases to 106 to 108 degree centigrade water vapor will not form so we we can avoid the vapor lock or the cavitation in the boiler feed water pump section since the deerator is situated at 14 to 15 meter height that will give npsh sufficient npsh to avoid the cavitation this is the deerator boiler feed water going to the boiler this is a steam distributor piping this is a indication for the trays steam line and boiler feed water this is maintained here now the this is pressure type deeration another type is also vacuum type is there in that uh, the boiling point of temperature is less so mostly this is a pressure type deeration is normally used to have a incoming boiling feed water temperature around 106 to 108 degrees centigrade that will reduce the fuel efficiency we can now see the chemical deeration or oxygen scavenging the chemical used is sodium sulfide it is injected at the immediate outlet line of deerator to remove residual or remaining oxygen from boiled feed water but it is subject to thermal decomposition at high pressure at high pressure it will decompose and at high pressure normally hydrazine is used hydrazine also will not increase the tds decomposes into ammonia which goes along with the steam and it raises the ph value to in the boiler feed water but the only problem is it is carcinogen in nature so harmful to our health it is banned in many countries the alternative for hydrazine and sodium sulfide is amine amines are used as oxygen scavengers and it not only degrade the oxygen it is increase the ph of boiler feed water also hope you might have understand the boiler mounting boiler accessories deeration principle classification of boilers in this episode in the next episode let us see about tsp dosing and cbd do not forget to subscribe and share my videos put your likes and comments in the comment box thank you very much